Oh, you didn't write your report? Yeah, yeah. 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 it was Patty's, Patty's brought Tracy on before. Yeah. And I think Mike's brought her on too. Like an Alice did. So. Yeah. All right. Good evening and welcome to today's worship of Ash Wednesday, the first day of the Lenten season. So today we will not have a regular Sunday morning. Uh, everything going through with announcements already. It is a reflective worship and prayer. Therefore, we will not have many things that we'll do, so I just wanted to um, so you won't be alarmed. And it is a service of prayerful reflection. And um, so let us keep that spirit of silence, self-reflection, and uh, meditation as we begin our journey with today. Now we prepare ourselves for worship. And with the music recorded, so we'll see what happens. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and mind, and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been unwilling to respond. 
respond to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, willingly and unwillingly, knowingly and unknowingly. We have indulged in our privileges. We, we confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept, Accept our, our repentance, Lord. Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation, our self-centeredness over the rest of your creation. Accept, Accept our, our repentance. repentance. Lord, grant all who turn to you the courage to participate with you in restoring this broken world to wholeness, that everyone and everything may share in the hope of your kingdom. Hear us, Hear us the Lord, of life. The Almighty God who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their brokenness to wholeness, has given authority to servants of the Lord to declare and pronounce to God's people that God forgives and restores all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe in God's holy gospel. Amen. Amen. Now our gathering hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, from the recorded music.
first reason of greeting is taken from Joel chapter 2, various verses. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Like there has never been from an old, nor will it be again from them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, so to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. <clears throat> Who knows whether he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples? Where is their God? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We will sing the song, Psalm 51, verses 1 through 17, responsibly. <clears throat> Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, and your great compassion blot out my offenses. Wash, Wash me through and through, my forgiveness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and none was evil in your sight. So you are justified in his cheek, and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth and truth in you, and we have any known wisdom and humility. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear the glory of your eyes, and the body of the Lord in your choice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create me a new heart of God and renew the right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of salvation and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders and sinners shall be restored to you. Rest in your beautiful nature. God, my salvation, and my tongue shall save in your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. We take your delight in sacrifice, for our wife to give it. You are not pleased with burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled and broken heart. O God, you will not despise. Second reading is taken from 2 Corinthians. Five, several verses. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteous of, righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation I have helped you. See, now this is the acceptable time. See, now this is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anybody's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commanded ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of the righteousness for the right hand, 
and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you and whenever you fast do not look dismal like the hypocrites for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting truly I tell you they have received their reward but when you fast put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others but your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, my rock, my redeemer. Amen. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of our Lenten journey. And this year at Shepherd of the Glen, our overall theme for this season is our Lenten journey to Easter Vigil, Wilderness to Deliverance. Wilderness to Deliverance. As Jesus began his journey from wilderness, at first he didn't go to the wilderness willingly, but Spirit has led him to wilderness right after he was baptized. He stayed there 40 days and 40 nights in fasting and prayer. He surely passed his testing times in flying colors, defeating Satan not one time, not two times, but three times. Wilderness is not a place anyone aspires to be, similar to becoming. Dust is not anyone who wishes to be. Yet today is a reminder of that hard truth, to face it. Christian community all over the world prepares for Easter and enters this holy season of Lent, marking with these words, 
reminding us who we are all after all dust remember your dust and to dust you will return one might wonder why would anyone want to be reminded that they are dust why would anyone need a religion to remind them that they are just dust and nothing but dust and that this is where they will return why does anyone seek god to be reminded of them for being dust rather than for god's promise but to be aware of this one simple truth can turn our lives as we wander away from god today we are called to return to the lord our theme again the season is from wilderness to deliverance such beautiful thing where when one can't get to the other side without traveling through that wilderness the wilderness is not end in its itself but it, it is a means to an end if, if jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness fasting preparing himself for what is to be revealed on easter sunday to offer us the deliverance to offer us the salvation one thing is sure is that for deliverance that jesus promises is a destination for which there is this road map one has to walk through the wilderness the lent gives us an opportunity to willingly enter this journey to walk along with jesus to walk in the way of jesus that he once said and cautioned and alarmed people in the very next chapter in the gospel of matthew in chapter 7 it says enter through the narrow gate for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction and there are many who take it for the gate is narrow and the road is hard that leads to life and there are few who find it the narrow road that jesus is taking to take and on this lenten season i think the both are widely in front of us the narrow road as well as the wide road jesus calls us to be willingly walk into that narrow and hard path only because it leads to a better destination which is everlasting life the wide road the destination is for destruction and that's what the text says as we gather here today to begin our wilderness journey we come here of course with some thoughts and preparation what should i do for lent this year what should i read or study what should i give up or take on we all have been through that we would like to willingly enter into this journey <clears throat> what we do is after all reflection of who we are on the inside what we do is a reflection of who we are on the inside the text today is focusing more on who we are to be than what we are to do to fast to give alms to pray to practice piety and everything good works at the end the question is to what end we do these things why do we do things good things so good can be done unto our neighbors our siblings in christ or to self serve or to boast about ourselves or to boost our honor to what end we do even good works matters the text today is talking about you may be doing good works but do them discreetly let god see you in secret because that is what who you are that matters than what you do so you gain your reputation or you gain in your your honor that is what jesus is now telling his disciples not to do not to do where your heart matters a lot 
even through good works, if you aim to serve yourself. I am afraid the text says, you may be rewarded by people, you may be honored by people around you, who may sing praises to you, but you are not going to be rewarded in heaven. Time to think, why do we do what we do? Are they in line with what God wants us to do? What God wants us to be? The text is calling out loud and clear not to be self-seeking, but to practice humble acts of righteousness. And it takes intentionality to raise above our temptation to self-seeking nature. Because it is easy for us to get trapped to the temptation of self-pride. Even Jesus could not escape it. Satan was time and again tried three times, one after the other, hitting on his pride, hitting on his vulnerability. Lent is a reminder to let go of that pride, to remember that we are dust, unto dust we shall return. In our first lesson today, God proclaims, Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Bend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord, your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lent is about taking that step aside and to return to the Lord. Because we have been wandering away, this is again time to focus and center ourselves. It is easy to turn away from God, lose focus, lose our sight to what we are called, both as individuals and also as church. Together as church, what is our calling? Churches are also, as body of Christ, turning away because we don't want to walk into the wilderness. We don't want to walk into something that is unknown. If we cease to be a church, if we cease to get to the other side, how can we be the church that bears witness? We do have to make a choice sometimes. To be in that place of wilderness that is unknown and to keep, keep going. One day a young lady was driving along with her father and they came upon a storm and the young lady asked her father, what should I do? Father said, keep driving. But she sees cars begin to pull over to the side, the storm was getting worse. What should I do? The young lady asked again. Father says, keep driving, you're okay. On up a few feet, she noticed that 18 wheelers were also pulling over and she told her dad, I think I must pull over too because everyone is doing it. I can barely see ahead. And if everyone is doing, that must be the right thing to do. And father told her, don't give up, just keep driving, you're okay. Now the storm was getting terrible. And she was losing confidence, <coughs> but she did not stop driving. <coughs> Slowly and steadily, she kept driving. Now she's beginning to see it a little more clearly. After, after a few miles, she was again in the dry land, and the sunshine came out. And her father said, now you can pull over and get out. She said, but why now? He said, when you get out, look back at all the people that gave up and still stuck in the storm. Because you never gave up, your storm is now over. Sometimes wilderness can make us feel that way. To give up and to stop and not take another step. But what is important is to keep going through that wilderness. Never mind how hard it is. Never mind how slow it is, you will see the deliverance on the other side. Wilderness, the vast land, the only to get through, to keep taking another step and not give up. Let go of your fear 
of being in wilderness. Because we are invited to wilderness sometimes, where we have no control. And we need to be able to give up, to let go of that pride, to let go of wanting and needing to be in control. Someone said, fear can be faced in two ways. F-E-A-R, forget everything and run. That's one way to do it. F-E-A-R, face everything and rise. And both choices are right in our hands. As we are invited to be in the wilderness, let go of that fear, but keep taking that step to move, move forward. So wilderness to deliverance is what we will see. May God bless these words.
you for the gift of life and the gift of all those who love. Almighty God, you love us, but we have not loved you. You call, but we, we have not listened. We walk away from neighbors in need, wrapped up in our own concerns. We have gone along with people, people, with pride, with quarreling, with divisiveness. Holy God, help us to face up to ourselves, so that as you move towards us in mercy, we may repent, to turn to you, and receive mercy. For I put your spirit upon us as we begin in this Lenten season. Let us, Let us be called to this quiet space, where we can better hear you speak and dedicate ourselves once again to walk in the light of your love. And in God's name we pray. Amen. Guided by the Holy Spirit as one body, let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. May the Spirit drive us into the wilderness to be in the presence of God. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always.